Hey guys, what's up? Oh look, Buddy decided to make an appearance on my video. <laughs> Welcome back you guys. It has been a while. First off, just a couple housekeeping things. I have uh, quite a few new subscribers here, so I just want to welcome you all to the channel and do a little quick little introduction, and then I'm going to dive into today's video. I won't ramble on too long. If you're new here, hi, my name is Jessica. I am a woman in long-term recovery. I'm a certified peer recovery specialist. I'm also a certified revive trainer. And here on this channel, I make videos about recovery, about substance use disorder, mental health, trauma talk. Thank you guys so much for all the new subscribers. I just want to take a minute before I get into today's video and tell you guys thank you so much. I appreciate each and every one of you. Please don't hesitate to um, hit the like button if you like this video. Uh, hit that red subscribe button if you haven't subscribed yet and leave me a comment and let me know what you guys think. Today I want to talk to you guys about what it means to be trauma informed and there's two parts of this that we can talk about, and I'm probably going to wind up making another video because there's two parts of it. And the part I want to focus on today is being trauma informed as like general population. And I say there's two parts of it because there's also something called trauma informed care. And I kind of am touching on that today. Trauma informed care applies more to the people that are in like a healthcare setting or a clinical setting. Um, as far as the official diagnosis of it goes. But when I started lear learning about trauma-informed care, my brain said, well, why can't we all do that? Uh, you know, you don't have to be a, a doctor or a nurse or a therapist or anything like that to practice trauma-informed care in your life. So being that it was a relatively new term to me, new term like within the last couple of years, I thought I would make a video and tell you guys about it in case there's people out there that don't know. And also because I feel like a lot of us on this channel have probably had some form of trauma in your life. And not only do I want to tell you about this, so it's practices that you can practice in your life, but also so if you go to a doctor or healthcare provider, if you are seeking out counseling or therapy, anything like that, you will know things to look for when you go to those places and you can advocate for yourself. First, I just want to talk about trauma in itself just a little bit, and then we're going to get into um, all the stuff about being trauma informed. Just a little bit about trauma. The Oxford Dictionary definition of trauma is a deeply distressing or disturbing experience. And that could be violence in your childhood, violence in your community. It could be any number of things. And I say any number of things because no one can tell you what is traumatic to you and what is not. So please remember that. Um, if you have something happen to you in your life and you feel like it's traumatic to you, that's the end of the public debate. There is no public debate about what is traumatizing to you and what is traumatizing to me. You and I can go through the exact same experiences and I can be traumatized by it and you can not. Different things in our life affect us differently. Just keep that in mind. You know, don't judge other people on what they feel like is traumatizing and don't let other people judge you by what you feel like has happened in your life that is traumatizing to you. There's so many different forms of trauma, and I'm I'm going to do another video to just give you guys some general information about trauma as well, because doing research for this video, I learned a lot about trauma that I didn't know, and, I, you know, I have PTSD, I have a lot of trauma from past relationships, I have a lot of trauma from my childhood, and, you know, there's always more that you can learn out there. So I'm going to try to make a separate video about that. And before I forget, because I already did, I do want to say I'm not a medical professional. I'm not a therapist. I'm not a counselor. Um, my certifications that I have, you know, aren't uh, in the medical field. I have the certifications that I have because of my lived experience with my substance use disorder. So please know that, number one, any information that I give you in this video, all the articles, everything that I used for research will be linked in my description box below. Anytime I use articles, magazines, anything like that, I always make sure to leave you guys a link in the description box 
So you can check them out for yourselves. Just keep that in mind. Uh, if you, another definition that I saw that they classified as a general definition for trauma is a psychological emotional response to an event or an experience that is deeply distressing or disturbing. It encompasses everything from having a car accident to being sexually assaulted, being raped, anything like that, childhood abuse. That's why I said in the beginning, you and I can go through the exact same experiences. What I find traumatizing, you may not, or you may find it traumatizing in a different way. Trauma is a very complex subject. Please also remember that trauma affects everybody differently. Trauma is stored in a lot of places in your body, and I know that sounds weird, but it is. Trauma is stored in a lot of places in your body, not just in your mind. And it can have a variety of different effects on your body, on your mind, on your emotional state, everything. So the biggest part of today's video that I want to talk to you guys about is trauma-informed care and being trauma-informed. Being trauma-informed has is something that has been around for a very long time. Back when the Vietnam War was going on, and before that, before the Vietnam War, a lot there was a lot of stigma around soldiers that had battle fatigue or they called it homesickness, things like that. We didn't realize back then that our soldiers were suffering from PTSD and they noticed a marked difference in soldiers once uh, exploding ammunition when they went from just having guns to like having uh, big exploding cannons and things like that because if you're in the middle of a war not only are you having to worry about where your enemies are you're you're in a fight or flight mode all the time and then they introduce something else that's super loud that can kill you they noticed that a lot of quote-unquote battle fatigue was was getting a lot higher i'm not going to go into all that today if you're a nerd like me that stuff is really interesting and you can find research on it it's really interesting. After World War II, they started trying to fold in, if you will, trauma-informed care. And I don't think that they called it that back then. You know, nowadays we have a fancy schmancy name for everything, even if we've been doing it for decades. But soldiers that were uh, experiencing battle fatigue, specifically, you know, just being extremely exhausted, I'm sure, they were trying to find ways to let them rest before they had to go back to battle. If there was any time period that they could let their soldiers rest in type of a rotation or something like that, they would let them do that because they noticed that it was affecting them, you know, physically and mentally. And if they could give them that rest, that was helping them overall. So during the Korean and Vietnam War, they did talk therapy and it was coming more into focus. They really started to just show more of an interest in taking care of people that went through that traumatic experience of being in a war after they went home. Way back before the Vietnam era and, and, and all that, they thought that guys were, because back then it was just men that could join the military, but they really, they essentially thought that the guys were just being wimpy and they would try to screen them and see if they thought that they were going to be wimpy and have battle fatigue or if they were going to need, you know, extra care after they got home or extra care while they were out on the battlefield. And if they thought that through whatever their screening process was, they wouldn't let you join. Mental health has been highly stigmatized since probably the dawn of time. This isn't a new thing. People are just more vocal about it now. And I'm glad that they are because it's going to help all of us. The U.S. Department of Veteran Affairs, that was then called the Veterans Administration, developed group therapy for PTSD. They were the first people to do that. There is a lot of evidence that suggests that in like the doctor-patient situation that uh, trauma-informed care as far back as like the 70s was being enforced. And they have found over all these years that they've been doing this that being trauma-informed as a person and implementing trauma-informed care into your practices, especially in a healthcare setting, is extremely, extremely valuable, especially to people who have co-occurring disorders. So in my case, I'm going to say these two co-occurring disorders because that's what my channel is about, and it's the life that I live every day. So co-occurring disorders 
is like substance use disorder and having a mental health disorder. Like I have substance use disorder. I also have major depressive disorder, generalized anxiety disorder. So that just gives you a little bit of history. Trauma-informed care really from my perspective, what it boils down to is mainly like changing your focus. So one of the things that I kept seeing repeatedly was to change your focus. If I'm interacting with you, instead of me saying the words, what is wrong with you? It's changing your focus to saying what happened to you. Words are a lot more powerful than what people mean. And I think that we live in an age now where a lot of people will say something and then they realize that it was offensive or hurtful to another person, that it's real easy for people to be like, oh, I didn't mean it that way. And I think that that's something that we all need to work on because the words that come out of our mouth are very powerful. So if I asked you, what is wrong with you? That would immediately put my guard up. That would make me not want to, you know, open up and share with you and give you the benefit of the doubt that you could provide me with any help at all. But if someone came up to me in that setting and said, what happened to you? It, it just changes the whole narrative. One of the things that I want to point out in a healthcare setting, in an office setting, because, you know, uh, trauma-informed care is being rolled into our schools. And I didn't do a lot of research on like the schools, so I don't know if that's a new thing or not, but... You know, our educators are in a very uh, specific and special place with our kids. So I think it's great that they do trauma-informed care at schools because then it teaches you um, how to do all the things we're getting ready to talk about. I also just want to say that there needs to be a, a conscious decision to become a trauma-informed person because there's a massive difference and people that you deal with are going to be able to tell if you are trauma-informed and if you're enforcing trauma-informed care policies and procedures because you want to and because you think that it's the way people need to be treated, etc. Or if you're just doing it because it's a new policy at work that you have to abide by. So I, th I think that's a big thing that, you know, we need to be conscious of. It's it's something that I feel like everybody should do. You know, we should all be changing our perspectives and how we talk to people and how we treat people. And, you know, it goes back to the golden rule of, you know, treat people how you want to be treated. And I can remember my granddad telling me when I was little, all of my life up until he passed away, you know, be kind because you never know who's fighting a battle. And I think that's actually like a Mark Twain quote, but my granddad used to tell me that all the time. And for as long as I can remember hearing him tell me that, it really stuck with me because he's right. You never know what is going on behind somebody's smile or if you just see him during the workday, if you just see him while you're at school, you don't know what is going on in their life that happens behind closed doors. Some of the other things that I picked out of here to share with you guys about what is trauma-informed and what is trauma-informed care really involves being aware. And you need to be aware of human experiences. You know, you need to be aware of why people may feel overwhelmed, unable to come to terms with things that have happened to them in the past. A lot of times when you see someone you think is an overreaction to something small, it may be linked to other things that have happened to them in the past, and we don't know that. It needs to be a shift in how you treat people and the things that come out of your mouth and the words that you say. Trauma-informed care changes how you approach things like situations, uh, people, just people in general, and it doesn't have to be people that you know, like friends and family members. It can be people that you see out on the street or in the grocery store, or anything like that. Little things we do and say can make a big difference and how we do those things. Being trauma-informed is, like I said, like the golden rule, being nice to people. Being trauma-informed does take it to another level, especially if you, you know, work in any field where people come to you. Like I said, like being a doctor, like being a teacher, um, like being a peer, any, any kind of professional situation that you're in. Yeah, you do have other core principles, and um, if this video doesn't get too long, I'll 
I'll get to them. If not, I might have to make a second video. But the little things that we do and say can make a big difference. How we do those things can determine whether the difference is a good or bad one to people. Sometimes you can just tell when other people have a lot more going on. But trauma, when it happens to us, takes away our choice. We don't have a choice to get out of that situation. We don't have a choice to leave the room or stop talking to the person, get away from the person that's abusing us. So trauma takes our choices away from us. Being trauma-informed and enforcing trauma-informed care gives those choices back to those people. And one of the big things about being trauma-informed, probably number one, is to make sure that you do not re-traumatize that person. When you are practicing trauma-informed care, it gives us, as people that have been traumatized in the past, it gives us our voices back. Like I said, if you're going through a traumatic situation, you lose your choice in a lot of different ways. We lose our voice. If you're interacting with someone and you are practicing trauma-informed care, you give them their voice back. You let them have choices. You just need to make sure that the choices that you are giving them affect their life in a positive, healthy, forward-moving direction instead of, you know, holding them back or re-traumatizing them. Giving respect, being nice. I mean, a lot of these things are just general kindness. Just being trauma-informed is more of just taking your awareness off of yourself and seeing what's going on with other people. And when I say that, just being nicer to people and stuff like that, when you have an open perspective that encompasses someone's entire life, not just one aspect of it. It makes such a massive difference. And I can speak from that from personal experience because for a long time, and sometimes even now, when I tell people that I was in active addiction for 14 years and I was a single mom during all of those 14 years, that's usually what people tend to focus on. When I tell people that I'm a, a convicted felon, that's what people focus on, even though that happened 20 years ago, and I've never had any trouble with the law since then. We have a tendency as people to focus on the negative or just focus on the one situation of that person's life that is in front of us right now. And being trauma-informed means that you open up your perspective, you open up your mind, and you are willing, you become willing to see their life in its entirety. You don't just see that one thing in front of you, you know. If it's someone experiencing homelessness, you don't just see that about them. That's what I mean when I say that we need to open our minds and our perspectives and take into account more than just what is right in front of us at the time. So how can we do these things? We can recognize the adverse childhood experiences that people have experienced or other traumatic events that have happened in their life. If you know about these, then, you know, keep them in your mind. And I'm not saying that you have to tread carefully and walk around and treat people like they're broken, fragile glass all the time. <clears throat> because a lot of times, you know, that's not what we want as people that are walking this recovery pathway. We just want to be treated with respect. We want people to see everything that's happened to us, not just one or two things that has happened to us. And we want them, you know, to help us. Another thing that you can do is to recognize that a lot of people's behaviors and uh, symptoms that you see outwardly displayed are because of trauma, traumatic events that have happened to them. Being treated with kindness and respect, being empowered to make your own choices, those are big, massive keys in helping people recover from their traumatic experiences and for them to shift their mindset going from a day-to-day -day existence to being able to set goals and see that there is a way out of this and that they can recover. And I'm not just talking about recovery from substance use disorder, but recovery from whatever has happened to them in their life, because a lot of people have a lot of things that happen to them in their life. And even though we grow up physically, we struggle with a lot of things that have happened to us because we were never taught the correct way or shown the correct way to deal with it and move on from it and recover from it. A lot of us trauma survivors 
people that have gone through long addictions, people that are in long-term recovery for whatever the case may be, a lot of us doubt our ability to ever heal. And especially when you throw in trauma on top of it, it is a very hard, near constant battle that you have to fight. And a lot of times it gets so overwhelming that we lose the ability to think that we're going to get to the end of it or we're ever going to get through the bad and into the good. Validating that for them and empowering them to see, yes, you are going to get through this. I'm going to help you. And that is the end of my, my notes. I just want to leave you guys with a couple thoughts that are important and that I hope you keep in mind. A lot of times people that have had trauma in their life, we have a really hard time developing and maintaining healthy, supportive relationships. And that can be with anybody. It doesn't just have to be with a healthcare professional. It can be with people in your family. It can be people in your friend group, in your social circle, whatever the case may be. Trauma-informed care gives us an opportunity to make that more manageable. It gives us the space to help people build those relationships and show them that not all those relationships are going to be bad and that they can be supportive and that they can do this. It helps us to know that we have an active role in that relationship. So if you're practicing trauma-informed care, it helps more than more than what you know. It, it builds such a safe, caring, inclusive environment. And yes, in a healthcare setting, but really anywhere. Like I said, uh, if you work as a peer, if you work as a recovery coach, I focus on those things because that is me, you know. Um, but like, I, like I've said a million times now, trauma-informed care um, can be practiced anywhere. And so if all of us practice trauma-informed care, we lower the stigma of a lot of people that are getting stigmatized. And again, I don't just mean people that um, use drugs, people that have a problem with substance use disorder. We lower the stigma for so many groups of people that have suffered through trauma in their life and are being traumatized for, for whatever reason. We lower the risk of re-traumatizing those people also by adjusting our focus and using a trauma-informed care approach when we speak to people, when we interact with people. And we promote positive feelings in people instead of making them feel like they're less than. Because if you're stigmatized, if you're talked down to all the time, if you um, have had traumatic events in your life, a lot of times that's, you know, part of it is being made to feel like you were less than. So trauma-informed care is just, you know, one big ball of let's be nice to each other, to be honest with you guys. <laughs> so I hope that you guys learned something from this video. That is it for today. I hope that you guys enjoyed this video. Please let me know what you think about it in the comments below. Everything's linked in the description box below. Like this video if you like it. Hit that big red subscribe button if you're not already subscribed and join our family here. And I will see you guys in the next one. Take care of yourselves and take care of each other. Love y'all.